Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Imagine a perfect world where before you write one line of code, you get to do whatever you want. Today, we're going to cover nine basic points of things that you should do before you write one line of code. Yeah. What to do before you write your program. That, that's a great topic. Yeah. So if you think about it, I mean, that's, we want to get to like, what things should you do before you write any code, right? What should you get yourself going? You know, lay out what you're going to do. We're covering nine separate points today in today's podcast. Hey, everyone. It's Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And let's get into these nine points to cover before you start, you know, writing any sort of code. Um, so let me start off with the first one here. Uh, the very, very first thing I do, right, is I go look through and look for any sort of examples of stuff I've done in the past, because often, so often, I'm just repeating things that I've done before. And it's ridiculous to always start from scratch and write new things. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that because that's that's one of the things I love with switching away from Notepad in the beginning was the ability to search in files just to see if I had something there. Yeah. You want to take the next one? Yeah, I, I was like, uh, I also searched the internet, you know, the forums, documentation, Stack Overflow, Reddit, uh, stuff like that. Uh, all of the places where you could find uh, usable, nice code. Yeah, it's really kind of crazy how often your stuff is already out there, right? And, and why, you know, even if you don't use it, you know, exact word for word, um, it, you can get really close and save yourself a ton of time. Yeah, for, for a lot of the stuff that we do, at least, where, where it might not be that big, uh, you know, commercial uh, stuff, Mostly you do stuff for yourself or you're trying to help someone do something and uh, you can really get a long way with, with stuff you can find online. Yeah. The, the other one, with, which actually I should add into that one, is don't be afraid to look for other types of tools that have touched on the same topic area and kind of use it as a frame of reference, right? Because often yeah. you can you know, look at what they did right and what they did wrong, more importantly. Right, and, and adjust it. Yeah, you can learn a lot from just looking at other people's code. Absolutely, and, and, and yeah, especially if you're dealing with a GUI, right, really kind of save a lot of design time. Yeah. Okay, no, number three, which is uh, you know equally important, maybe you put it before the other one, depending on how much you want to annoy your friends, is uh, ask your friends and colleagues, uh, mentors, do they have any examples doing this? Because, um, you know, often you haven't actually worked on it, but someone else that you know has, and in, in, depending on the complexity and what you're touching on, if you're working in an area that's completely new, um, it can save you a ton of time for ask for a, a 10 minute, you know, dive into the topic that you're covering because starting from scratch and anything takes a lot more time when someone can give you an example and explain how to use it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, they might even just be able to point you to that other person who actually did at one point because they knew about it and you didn't. So yeah, it, it's, it's a great way of, of expanding on your search before you actually start writing anything yourself. Yeah, that, and that's actually a really valid point, Jack, because uh, often that's what I'll say is, I, you know, do you have a different, can you just point me in the right direction, right? Like, you know, I'm trying to do this, do you know how to, to, to deal with it? Or, you know, do you have an example where, you know, I've seen anyone touch on it? Because um, yeah. you know, that's the thing, that, Jack, you know, you, you're a far better programmer than I am. You know, we've touched this before, like I'll work on something and yet I'm trying something new and I don't even know what to even search for, right? Like what keywords to use. Some, sometimes you're working in such areas where you're like, I, I just can't find anything on it. I know there's been stuff done on it, but I yeah. can't find it. And then someone else, you know, has already done the due diligence. They, they can point you in the right direction. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of this from, from just not being a native English speaker. Uh, actually, finding the correct terms can sometimes be hard. You would know it in your uh, native language, but uh, being a small country like mine, wow, that's a great it is limited. You, doing stuff in your own language and using translations and all of that stuff doesn't really give you any useful things. Actually, speaking to a person who might even be a native 
speaker of that language will will help. That's for sure. Yeah, I love it. All right, why don't you tackle number four? Yeah, scratch uh, outline of, of what needs to be done, right? That, that's one of the things that I've done myself at times where take a piece of paper or something like that and, and get an idea of, of what I need to go through. I might not structure it as, as code or anything like that, but just having that overview to myself, maybe a brain map or whatever you'd call it, to have that list of what needs to be done, what, what I need to go through to actually make it happen. Yeah, and, and, and it ties in that really well with the next one, which is the itemizing of each kind of process and list the objects you're gonna be, objects and types of functions, the things that you're gonna be using. Um, I think the two go hand in hand, right? You, you start sketching out the general, you know, idea and concepts of what you're gonna do. And then as you start doing that, you know, you can make little notes of like, oh, actually this will be, you know, the Excel com object or, or whatever here, right? Um, to, to, again, you're not programming, but you're just kind of helping yourself understand when you start programming, these are what you're going to use in those spots. Yeah, and, and it can be even more superficial if, if you don't even have any idea of what functions or code or anything like that you will use. And, and this might be something some would do before asking friends, stuff like that. So these points ain't necessarily in order. But yep. yeah, it, it's still stuff we, we mean that you, you'd want to do before you write any code. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And to your point, because a couple of these we're going to touch on in a minute, um, you might raise that up much earlier in the process because uh, it just depends on what you're doing, right? What kind of a thing you're working on. Um, yeah. It changes things greatly. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, in all, I haven't done it much, but writing pseudo code uh, of what will be done, maybe your naming convention for your functions, or maybe exactly what some of your your code will actually be doing, or stuff like that. That that can really be useful. Yeah, I, that that was number six. I I love that one a lot because it's it's honestly I've gotten in the habit of that's when I'm starting something new. I literally will write like the seven to ten bullet points of. Uh, first, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, right? And I write them all out just in plain text, you know, no no programming, just what I'm going to do. And then, uh, kind of as I mentioned earlier, I'll go back sometimes and, and actually put a reference to the, you know, like the Excel, you know, com object or whatever it is I'm going to use in that spot. But I find it really helpful. Uh, and, and then, you know, the other thing is it, it's kind of, it's kind of like, I don't know if people run into this where, What's it called? Writers. What's it? Writers when they can't. They writers can't block. Block. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's scripters block. They don't know where to start. Right. It's such a big task, and yet it's so easy to just write out what's got to happen. Right. Um. And, and and not code. Just kind of like, well, we got to have this. And we got to start here and do this. Um. And, and it really kind of helps you organize things, um, and get started on it. And then you start peppering and like, hey, let me go. The other great thing is it's a whole. How do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time? Some things are so huge that it feels like you're never going to get there. Well, if you have this nice kind of list, you can compartmentalize and say, hey, I'm going to work on this thing today, right? Or in the next hour, and I'll get that thing done. And, and, it, and it breaks it up for you. Yeah, it, it can be really useful. I've, I've even drawn GUI examples to myself, just like, and then I want this to do that. And depending on how advanced it is, but right. yeah. Uh, the, which which gets us in the next one, and that's where point number seven is. You know, decide if you're going to have if you if you think you should have classes, you know, or functions, or maybe use a Go sub um, or set timers, right? And like in, in you know, we aren't normally programming on a hotkey, and set timers help you achieve some very specific goals. Often, like especially trying to avoid a, a multi you know, or pretend like you have multi-threading type stuff, right? So. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can actually do that one unless you kind of have some sort of pseudocode or something of an understanding of what you're going to be working on. The, the, I think the better you've kind of fleshed out what you're going to do, the more likely you can understand should you have, you know, do you need a class? Like, are you going to be repeating using things? Do you need some sort of a template that you keep using all the time? Um, in, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, so I, I think having them written out really helps on that. 
Yeah, and and I totally. If if you're advanced enough to use classes, fair enough. Uh, I'd say if goes ups versus functions, those are so 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 close. So right. when whenever it makes the most sense, use functions. And if there is some place where it goes up, it's needed. Sure enough, use that. But yeah, I I do love having an idea of where you're going with it because yeah you can sure enough fill your class with functions and definitions but um, you might not need to put in that layer of complexity if, if there's no need for it yeah that was i was uh i actually had uh, well actually i actually won't get it but um it, it has been i don't know the last time i wrote a ghost up Right. Once I learned functions, like everything I do is in a function. That's why when I saw it, but I'm like, you know, occasionally they do have their usage, right? Um, yeah. I, it seems I, like I, more with GUIs, it, it even comes up more often. Yeah, maybe, but but also with labels and, and at least in other hotkey and right. stuff like that, being able to jump to other places and you can have advanced enough um, if else three trees and stuff like that. And you might need to jump over some of it if, if some depending on how you are able to structure it, it, it can be a thing. Um, but, but it's the same with um, the, the, the next point where you would try to determine if a script is to be only run on your computer or if you're gonna be sharing it with others or if you're making it for someone else. All those things can actually account for what you're doing here because if you're making it for a one-time thing, use what works now for you or whatever brain state you're in. But if you're making it for someone else, hmm, maybe you'd want to make it um, maintainable because you might need to edit it at some point for them or uh, on their request or whatever. And if it's something that you're working on with others together, you might need to do even more of this, having it even more structured and uh, determine exactly the use of, of whatever your, your program is. Oh, that one, you're spot on, Jackie. Uh, and, and even, I'd say, more often than not, that is one of the really, really early things because it changes everything, right? If, you know, the second you know, besides all the other points you made, if it's going to run on just another computer versus just this computer, right? And you're doing something with image, you know, looking for an image, you're like, uh, oh, oh boy, right? It's, it's a, you know, and, it, and it'll change your whole approach, right? Of like, well, if I'm if I'm going to run this on different computers, even if it's not just me, but your point of other people, which you know that changes everything as well, right? Um, I had Tank working on something for me the other day, and he's like, you know, did you want me to create a GUI for this? But I'm like, you know, when we later make it public and you know put it out there, yeah, absolutely. But for now, I don't want a GUI. I just want something that I can run and maybe change a little line and change. You know, I don't mind using the syntax we're doing it. Uh, but yeah, it's a critical point of, of understanding before you, you know, it's one of those things, it was last on the list, but it, it's it's one of those things that it's subconscious almost. You already know this. You don't even, you don't even write it down. You just, you've already kind of understood it. But sometimes you'll get caught where you didn't realize like, well, crap, actually I am sharing this, you know, this is going to be something that everyone's using or I use it more than one computer and that's going to change my approach. It's a critical one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, hey, if if you did something for yourself and you you just knew the file was in that exact location, or if uh, you expected it to be a specific version of Windows, or if you expected to have access to these specific resources, lots and lots of stuff that that you need to to take into account if uh, if it's just not to be used on yours, but if it actually needs to be a standalone thing so yeah yeah and, and that was where i think um which you addressed somewhat but i'd like to, to nail it down is often you'll be running it on a different computer but especially like in a work environment the 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 oases are the same right the environments are often the same so just the, but sometimes you're sharing it with the quote unquote the world the bigger audience and even the version of window like this screen clipping with OCR thing I you know I have and I used to use your Tesseract version and then I think you even want to mention it to me there's one that now uses the Windows 10 built-in stuff and I changed it to that but suddenly people that don't have Windows 10 right there they can't use that 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's just something something to be definitely thinking of. Yeah, and exactly with with the exact with the OCR thing because I've uh, I've been using TaskRat for some of my projects for quite some time, and it's a standard not a standalone solution, but it has the needed files, it has the needed language files, it has those things with it. Where with um, the built-in thing to Windows, it actually has your native language as its first choice. Mm. And if you don't have the English uh, language pack installed, mm -hmm. um, then it will have a harder time of actually determining English words, which might be a thing if the program or the web page or whatever you're doing actually is in English, but the person lives in Portugal or in uh, China or wherever. Um, so, so sometimes making sure that your thing actually works standalone or real that that's 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 something to think about yeah uh and then specifically with auto hotkey like um i'm trying to remember when i was programming with python i don't think this was ever really a concern but in auto hotkey it's very easy to have your scripts all rolled into one or or have them all separate and run separately and i have really been bitten in the butt with uh, uh, actually like the screen clipping one is a great example. Um, originally, I had that part of my main script and then people were like, hey, that's really cool. Can you send me that? I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's it's part of my main script. I have to piece it out. And I did that with a couple other ones as well. And I'm like, you know, kind of think about sometimes you do want to keep things separate and sometimes you can keep them all together. But that integration of how you're doing that, it's, it's something you want to think through ahead of time. Um, Otherwise, you're detangling stuff later that you really didn't have to. Yeah, yeah. And what to do before you write your program? That That is really an essential, exact good standard thing to do before you actually start using time on something that you might have to redo or if you find a better way or if you move down a hole that someone else has actually already explored. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was going to summarize uh, that with, uh, you know, what to do before you write any code, you know, called think, right? Like, yeah. put a little thought, you know, because most of us, we start going, and then, and then later, you know, you realize, like, oh, yeah, I, you know, it, uh, a little strategic thought up front uh, to, to do before you write any code can really help. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, right? The more you do that, the more people will see this and we get to help a lot of people. Yeah, and remember to comment which one of the nine points that you actually like. Or if you have one that we didn't mention, right? I'd love to hear it. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, bye.